Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabados of Dalmar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechvalley.com. We have a very special guest with us, Brian Ford, a Gilderland Town Councilman. Brian, welcome to The Jewish View. Yeah. Thank you, Rabbi. Welcome. Uh, Brian, what is your, you've only been on the town board since 2012. Correct. So uh, what's your passion? What got you involved all of a sudden to want to be out there pounding the pavement, getting signatures on petitions, <laughs> uh, getting the, uh, you know, I mean, it's uh, being a town board member. What's your passion? Well, I've always been involved in uh, public service and serving the people. And um, You were a police officer. I was a police officer in Gilliland for, for 25 years. Uh, I've been a volunteer fireman for 30 years, uh, and my passion was just helping people. And there were some things going on in Gilderland that, that I didn't like with the board, and um, being able to retire as a police officer at, at 25 years, uh, I chose to, to move into to that realm so that I could maybe make some changes in, in our government and, and for the betterment of Gilderland. And what bothered you that made you want to jump in? What was it? Well, our, our board seemed to be dysfunctional. Um, we had a couple board members that um, were completely in opposition of everything that that was going on, and uh, government just didn't seem to be moving. And you know, being working for the town for for 30 years um, and, and watching the town and uh, seeing that happen, just uh, you know, it, it sort of infuriated me that I needed to to step up and hopefully help so out. So, did you oust an incumbent? Uh, yes. Who? Uh, Mark Grimm. Oh, okay, I know him. Yeah. So you were... And, Mark, I yeah. think you know everybody. Well, I know Mark. There's an office over here in the Capitol. <laughs> Except Brian. I've never, really, I've never met Brian, and <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you no, for here. the show. But I just, you know, do you have certain issues now, besides government moving forward, which is always a big issue, but are there other, you know, you don't have a committee structure in the town board, right? Correct. So what comes up before the town board that really gets you... Uh, excited or motivated or, you know, that you really say, this is passionate for me? Well, um, seeing new development, you know, um, the economy kind of stalled the town a lot. And uh, when, when new projects come in and come before the board, um, those are things that really excite me because it kind of stirs momentum in our town and it'll stir our economy. And obviously with more business development, it's going to help and, and reducing school taxes, reducing resident taxes, and uh, uh, help with you know, uh, how the, the town actually functions. So those type of things. Um, I, I'm passionate about uh, kids and kids' safety, so you know, looking for new ways to uh, provide things for kids. Uh, our parks department just put in a, uh, are starting a, a state-of-the-art playground, probably uh, a model for the Capital District. Um, really? What's yeah. special about it? Um, just the structure of it, uh, it's, it's metal and kids can climb and it's got safety nets throughout it. So, I mean, it's a lot of different activities that I don't think anybody else around here has. More than just a padded floor? More than just, you know, or, or the uh, crumbled uh, uh, well, wood chips. You know, I was <laughs> in the town park in Gilderland with the Friendship Circle last year and the first time I was there. And it really is, like you say, an incredible place because usually, you, I mean, I'm in Delmar. Yeah, and just a flat, you know, you have your ball fields and your tennis courts, which is natural. And even Washington Park in Albany, I mean, this really was a very nice, you know, with mm -hmm. hills and trails and a lot of it's, different land. I thought it was very special. We, we take pride in our park system. And um, the, one of the other things was helping to uh, uh, invigorate our parks. Uh, we have what's called GPAC, Illinois Performing Arts Center. Um, which the building itself was modeled after SPAC. Uh, it's just a smaller Small version, version of SPAC. Of SPAC yeah. And, you know, with uh, the economy and not being able to fund, you know, do, do you fund a police officer, do you fund right. money into your parks? You know, obviously you, you do public safety before anything else. And um, so, so trying to streamline some funding and redo that, our, our pool system and our, our park system um, can use a little extra funding, so mm -hmm. being able to try and help and streamline uh, money towards that. And but you know, in the state budget, there used to be what's called member items, and Correct. it used to go to pay for the parks and Little League and, you know, give a few tens of thousands of dollars here and there. That doesn't happen anymore. Is there any state money that comes to the town for parks? 
Well, we we look for grants. Obviously, we you know we're we have a, a gentleman that that's his job is to look for grants, and um, uh, unfortunately, a town with an economy that we have and. Uh, our supervisor has done a fantastic job of, of keeping our tax rate down and streamlining our budget and making sure that uh, that we're able to function with the the, uh, the tax money that we have coming in. Um, getting that money from the state, you know, the, it seems to go to more um, needed communities rather than to somebody like Gilderland that could afford to pay for it themselves. But we, we have gotten some park money. Um, we have gotten some. Uh, some grants for sidewalks and things. In I, are you disappointed that there aren't these member items that each legislator could determine in their own district where needs are and then they can apply within the structure of the state budget to get the money directly for their, whether, whether it's Gildalyn or Knox or Burn or sure. Westerlo, I mean, it's just, are you disappointed that there's not that, that stream, that revenue stream anymore? Well, yes and no. I mean, I'd love to get money from the state to be able to do that, but at the same time, I know that um, they're trying to streamline you know, New York being one of the highest tax states in the country. Um, I know the state is trying to streamline some of the funding and where the money goes in the state to, to reduce our taxes, which would be great. Um, so if, you know, if the state's able to reduce taxes, which keeps people in New York, keeps people in Gildon, um, that's a good thing. Uh, and you know if we can try and find money somewhere else, but if they had the money to give, yes, we'd be aggressively going after it. <laughs> what is the tax compared? I mean, Gilderland's a nice suburb, and again, like I say, I'm in Delmar. What's the tax structure compared to? I guess we're fairly equal, even though I know Gilderland has three times the population of Delmar, but just a nice suburb outside of Albany. That's why I say, in a way, it's equal. I mean, just at first glance, I don't. That's I'm asking the. The inner workings, you know, yeah. two nice <laughs> suburbs right next to each other. Um, we, we actually pride ourselves on having the lowest tax rate in, in the capital district. Mm -hmm. our, our tax rate's 25 cents a thousand for, for each homeowner, um, which is fantastic. 25 cents. Not dollars. Cents. Cents, okay. You know, uh, I think my tax bill at my house is around five or, or uh, was it? maybe a hundred to two hundred dollars for your town tax and then obviously there's the tax rate for your sewer and water and there's the tax Encounter. rate for, yeah, for the, your highways but and the governor talks about all these taxing agencies you know whether it's a lighting district or it's right. something else you know he says that there's a, can you streamline any of that um a, a lot of it is consolidate a, a lot of it's consolidated um I believe sewer has to be a separate line item, and I believe your highway tax has to be a separate line Who item. Who says? I think that's state statute. So there you go. The yeah. state should change the <laughs> statute, then you can consolidate. Okay. <laughs> uh, but we can't change. Right. You know, I, I'm state? a local right. Right. politician. So what's your, um, so, so when you, like Rabbi Simon was saying, when you have a population of your, what's the population of the town? Uh, roughly 35,000. 35,000. Really, I thought it was more than. Yeah, no. And Delmar, and Del Del Bethlehem, Delmar, the town of Bethlehem, 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 Bethlehem. I said it's, then I'm mistaken then. It's fairly equal to Delmar. It's yeah, colony Bethlehem. that's. Uh, a colony that. Is 90,000. Right. Yeah, colony is 90, very, very big. But, but I think Gilderland is as big as But Bethlehem, the town of Bethlehem is the same size as Gilderland, right? For the most part. Um, well, we're, we're almost 64 square miles. I meant um, population-wise. Population-wise, they're about We're the about same. We're about the same, yeah. Yeah. So how many police officers do you have? There are 35. 35. And how many are on any one shift? Um, it depends on which shift. Um, normally four, four to five, sometimes six or seven on the afternoon shift, which okay. is the busier shift. And that's and to cover 64 square miles? 64 square miles. Is that doable or do you need more? Well, uh, coming from the police world, I always can say they, they need more. You know, and uh, uh, we have conver I have conversations with the chief about that, and um, we've we've progressively added a few. Now you're his boss over here. Her, Carol <laughs> <laughs> Lawler's the police yeah. chief. Yeah, yeah, her so, boss. Um, uh, I went from being her <laughs> subordinate to being her <laughs> boss. Right. right. Okay. So we've be, been friends for years. So you got to be nice right. to people yeah. on the way up because you're going to see them on the way down. Yeah, okay. So so. Uh, you think you need more than 35 officers for a town that size? Yeah. Um, 
the uh, I came from a juvenile, the juvenile unit. Um, I was the supervisor of a community service unit, um, and I was the SRO in high school. And uh, you know, I, I, we did a lot with with a little. Um, and that those positions have been cut. Uh, we went from uh, two school resource officers, one in the middle school, one in the high school, to just one covering the entire district. Uh, so you know, bringing back juvenile, I know the investigators could use. Um, an extra person just because of the case loads that they have and and we went from when I started as a police officer um, back in 1987 um, there were probably 20 to 30 state troopers out of the Gilvan barracks we have a barracks in Gilvan state um, police state, state troopers police. yeah uh, now mm -hmm. there's two two officers for the Gilvan two, two assigned wow yeah. so why is that uh, well, the increase in the Gildland Police Force. Uh, well, what was it when you, how many officers were there when you first started? When I got hired, there were 18. Okay. And progressively, so they've doubled. They've, they've doubled. Much, yeah. um, but the town has you know, doubled the population. The population didn't double. Uh, it was about 20,000 when I started, and now it's 35, so. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. You know, Juvenile, we talked on this show, we have many different guests like yourself from uh, people from school areas, uh, you know, that, you know, and it's a concern, you said it was yours, the juvenile and helping mm -hmm. out the kids with the parks, um, you know, it is for me too as a rabbi, you know, you help out kids, it's a shame. I mean, I have, I have my different reasons, I'd like to want to hear from yourself, you were riding the beat, you were right in there too, I mean, I also have to deal with people right there, you know, with all their problems. But um, what would you say is like the, I mean, is it worse or better since, because now, you know, you're not a youngster, you had 25, now 30 years since you start, something like that. What are the, pr the problems that are worse and what would you consider the biggest problems in youth today? Why they're trouble, why there are problems, or maybe it's getting better? <laughs> well, um, it's a big question. I it know, is a big question. And uh, uh, crime and violence seems to have gotten um, more Violent mm -hmm. to say, and and I don't know what to attribute that to. What do you mean more violent? Meaning you um, see more harsher crimes? Well, when when I was a kid, when I first came on as a police officer, you didn't see school shootings. You didn't see, yeah. uh, you know, the things that are going on in in, in the world. Graffiti was the biggest violent. Graffiti, yeah. and you stole something. Right. It's, you know, um, but you know now it's. Um, the, the influx of gangs, you know, we, you never heard of many even gangs in, here. Even in the suburbs? Even in the suburbs. Really? Oh, yeah. You know. no, yeah. I didn't know that. I thought um, it was more of an inner city kind of thing. When I was right. uh, in, in the school, I, I had a kid that was a uh, uh, renounced uh, Latin king. He, he had a manifesto and everything, mm -hmm. and he showed it to me. It's, you know, it, this is Gilbert High School. Yeah. Do you have any, you're talking about crime, and all that, but anti-Semitism, is there a lot of, or any anti-Semitism in the town of Gilbert? Um, there has been. I mean, there's not a lot. Um, I, I can remember uh, we, we were talking about the. Uh, or, um, right. I can't so remember one. Yeah. Okay. Guys, I was talking about the uh, uh, the uh, synagogue. The Sh school. Shabbos, 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 right? You mean Shabbos, uh, Shabbos, Fuller Road. Right. Um, back when it was the old building, I can remember some some anti-Semitism. Uh, they they sprayed painted the building, and this was uh, years ago. Many years right. ago, but okay. you know, um, and, and we had some, um, you know, we had some uh, uh, skidheads at the Gilliland High School that that did some. Um, they did swastikas. They, they and did some swastika. It. They, they, you know, tagged some things, um, made some comments. But you um, don't see people targeting Jewish. I mean, you have a large Jewish population in Gilliland, even though you don't only have the synagogue that's near. Or the congregation that's near the university at all being full of road, right? But um, you know, do you find that these skinheads or others are targeting Jewish homes, no, Jewish homeowners, no, and no. robbing and just because they're Jewish or anything, no, no. Our, our burglars seem to just hit our high end <laughs> houses. <laughs> they don't know who lives there. They just hit they're them. not discriminating yeah. over here. Um, you know, we we had some damage out to, across from Crossgates is the the Jewish cemetery. Yeah. Uh, years ago, we had some damage done where they, they went through and they kicked it in. But it's but, isolated. Well, when we interviewed right. them, it's like, did, were you doing this because it was a Jewish cemetery? He said, no, we're doing it because it's a cemetery and we <laughs> had fun to kick it over headstones. You know, so it, mm -hmm. it, right. it, it really doesn't 
does, that doesn't show up and they, that much. And in we've seen the Vale Cemetery in Schenectady right. where that's happened, and also Uncle's Oakwood Cemetery in, in, in Troy. Troy. They've right. done that. So it's yeah, it's just that they see stones and they want to yeah, uh, it's, toss them over. Yeah. It's not because <laughs> it, they're Jewish stones or anything. No, no. Uh, okay. So I just want to make that clear. I just yeah. want to you know I don't want people to think that we have a target you know, on our backs or something. No, you know? no, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Um, and, and how much of a problem is the heroin issue that's been coming up and been pre prevalent in some of the smaller towns in the Capital District? I mean, just throughout the state also, but uh, is Gildalyn uh, not seeing that yet? Oh, well, we've, we've seen some uh, increase of heroin in town. Um, we've had a couple of fatalities from heroin uh, overdoses and- uh, No one Jewish. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Okay. I mean, listen, it pervades all societies. People it used does. to always say, really isn't right. It goes the other way. We'll, we'll say, you know, I says, well, there's a few alcoholics or drug. You know, right. it goes throughout society. Oh, Jews don't. You know, I says, well, I need funding some from the social services, you know, to help these. Oh, it doesn't happen to the Jewish people. I says, I'm telling you, it does. You know, it just goes according to society. It's not right. Yep. So it goes the other way. Really, it's almost... You know, I feel people have to address the issues, you know, because it's not like, you know, or the Jewish people are rich and we did hey, there's a lot of poor people that need help, you know, and there's people. So really, it goes the other way, you know, I want to address the issues. Right. You know, it's not nice to say, but on these people need help. So mm -hmm. either you address the issue or you keep your head in the sand. What, how do you address the heroin problem in Gildland when you hear about it and it maybe comes up maybe at a town board meeting or you maybe you knew about it a few years ago before you retired you know well you know, <clears throat> when I was a, the school resource officer and working in my capacity um, we try to uh, obviously educate our younger folks that you know the the realities of, of what heroin does and, and um, how bad it can be uh, and I mean because it's not as prevalent as it may be in, in the city or um, uh, in other communities. Um, it really hasn't come as a town board issue that, that we've addressed. Um, you know, it, we, I talked to our chief of police and, and I talked to, uh, you know, my friends in the department and uh, about, you know, their, their contact. And, and they, they are making some progress and arresting some people that, that are dealing it and uh, working through that. Avenue, but um, are there meth labs in Gildaland or anything? Not like that? that that I know of. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm just wondering: is there, there? I mean, is marijuana the biggest problem that you might have? In yeah, terms and, of drugs? and there are trends with drugs. You know, you have your marijuana is always uh, it's in every community, um, especially Colorado. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it's legal there. and Washington State, I believe. Yeah, because the two teams in the uh, Super Bowl were uh, from. Marijuana approved right. states. Yeah. What are you making an <laughs> equation between them? I think, you know, really you're asking <coughs> questions that really goes probably beyond, you correct me if I'm wrong, you were a police officer, you're the expert professional. Well, that's why, I'm, that's why they yeah, pointed to him, because know, it's not, it's, it's beyond, not beyond his town board position, yeah. but he has a sensitivity to it right, as, a, as an officer. He sees what's happening in the street, but so, I'm for even example, if he off, was, it's not a city thing, no. county or state police. I no, but, if he, but for example, if his profession was uh, uh, something different, a music, as a musician, I wouldn't be asking him about yeah. these types of things. I'd I'm ask just him saying about music. if you're going to stop so. it, I'm thinking that it can't be on the city level. It's going to have to, I mean, it's coming from oh, somewhere, no, you know. but you know what? They, it's on a state level. But, yeah. but, some, but some of the best ideas come from the towns, and right. then they had suggested yeah. to the state or the feds, and some of the, because you're the closest to the problem. Right. And that's why the, most of those ideas that you think come from the state, they really gener, German, uh, germinate or, or come from the local level. Right. So that's, that's important. That's very true. Um, what's the, um, uh, what's your position or what do you feel about, from you know, a personal point of view? Do you have children? Do you have? I do. How many? I have three daughters. Three daughters, okay. And you're married. Mm -hmm. And you live in? Dillon. Yeah. Uh, what's the, and how old are you? Uh, 49. 49, okay. <laughs> oh, happy 50th when it comes. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's almost here. <laughs> uh, what do you think of medical marijuana, legalizing medical marijuana? Is that something that should be? Um, <clears throat> I, I've often said, I used to, uh, 
in my police days, I used to talk public policy classes that, um, you know, the marijuana is taught to me is not an addictive drug. And uh, if it can help somebody, what's the harm in allowing people to use it? Mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, I know folks with uh, uh, cancer can get a lot of relief from it. Um, glaucoma issues. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to, to marijuana that can help people. And if it can help people, we should be letting people, especially people in pain, mm -hmm. um, use something that they can help assist them and help them. And it would be under doctor's control, like morphine for the end of life right. would be under, is under doctor's control. You don't hear about a morphine abuse, no. you know, <laughs> but you hear it. But, you know, so I think if you have medical marijuana, it's provided, you know, not as a take-home drug, but as a, in the hospital. Mm -hmm. where you're under uh, medical supervision. Sure. I think that's reasonable also, but I just wanted to get your <laughs> opinion because they say marijuana is a gateway drug, and I just didn't know if there was a different uh, application for it, if then that makes it a little bit better. <clears throat> um, they say it is, but um, I've never been sold on that because if it's a non-addicting drug, how can it be a gateway drug? Is it a non-addicting drug? That's what I was told. Marijuana. In my training, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. You know, I also have a different perspective. Again, I'm a rabbi and not a police officer, but I do visit people in prisons and jail in the statewide. And, um, you know, it's interesting because usually you'd think people come to my congregation, they're, they're more of the conservative side, traditional side. And that's one thing I argue with them, and they say, well, we should legalize it altogether, like Colorado and Washington. You know how much money we would bring in and you know, a billion dollar industry, we would control it, you know, over the, uh, and I says, you know, I see the harm that is done. So sometimes, you know, you have a different perspective. I mean, a True. police officer, you see, well, you know, you, you see, you know, guns and another person says, well, I go hunting, what's wrong with a gun? And then you say, well, I saw, uh, you know, people dead with guns. You know, so again, you have a skewed perspective, uh, you know, and I also, I mean, I don't deal with it on parties, to say the least, I don't use it, God forbid. But um, I do see what it does to you people. And I said, oh, man, this is terrible. Let, let me ask you, because one of the biggest piece, uh, uh, areas of pride for the town of Gilderland is education. Mm -hmm. The schools, are, you, must, you have three daughters, so they must be in the public school system. They're Gilderland. out. They're, They're uh, out. Yes. They're 49. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I was trying to do the math, and I figured, well, you might have at least. Uh, See, my, my oldest is 24. She's a, gradu <laughs> a graduate of St. Rose. I was going to uh, ask you about the Common Core, but I guess that's personally yeah, not relevant. But Not, not really, <laughs> not for, for my kids. Um, I try to not follow it that much. Yeah. Cause <laughs> <laughs> okay, because it really Cause doesn't impact you on the town board. No. But I thought maybe on a personal level yeah. it might impact you. Um, Does the town board have anything to do with like the school system? So really, nothing has, at all. Really, so it's really not your voice. Or right, anything we're to totally it. separate boards. They come there to complain. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> People think that we do their tax, the, you know, the tax levy for the school district, and they blame the town for the the high rate of school taxes, and we actually have. Nothing to do with property. it. You have property taxes that you have to property deal with. Property tax, But the right. school taxes are a school board issue, mm -hmm. and that's separately elected uh, body, so. Right. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so, you know, juvenile justice, and so the youngsters and, the pol and crime are important uh, for yep. you on the town board. What other issues are important that you really feel passionate about? Well, public safety, obviously. Um, our, our park system. You know, I, yeah. I think parks are, are a, a good reflection of a, a town and their government. And what what's happening with the when the state had that exam at the Farnsworth Middle School, I mm -hmm. believe, and they tore up all the grass and everything. What's the town board's position on what should happen? I know it's a school board issue, but right. you know, what what? How do you feel? I mean, do you feel violated that you know this is something that the town paid for, and what's going to happen? Well, um, hopefully the school district will be able to recoup um, whatever it costs to, to fix that um, from the state or from the insurance company that covers that. Um, you know, obviously as a town board member, uh, I was kind of upset to the fact that uh, we weren't notified and we had to pull our resources, our police officers that were working the streets in there for an hour to direct traffic. Um, so now we have two committed police officers who 
can't patrol the streets and do their job because they have to direct traffic for, for that event. And you only have four on at a shift. Right. So you had two, half of the force was directing traffic. Covering 64 square miles. That's right. <laughs> 35,000 people. Um, you know, so, so those kind of issues are, are the things that, that affect us, you know, in, in parking. And obviously we got a lot of complaints from all the neighborhood along there where people were parking along the road and, you know. Um, I heard it was a mess. I yes, mean, terms, it's, it's you know. a complete mess. So uh, what do you do to correct it? What do you do not to have that happen again? What's well, we work, we work very closely with our superintendent of schools and, and the school board. And uh, <laughs> normally, in an event like that, they would call ahead to our police chief to schedule or even uh, a lot of times mm -hmm. they fund a police officer to be there. Um, so the school district would pay the town to have a police officer there. Um, in, in this case, uh, I think everybody was blindsided by the fact that they didn't know that that many people were coming. They assumed it was going to be 500. They've had classes or, or testing there before, and there's been no problems. Um, just this time, all of a sudden, they had a huge influx. And whether it was the Civil Service Commission that didn't call the school to let them know, or uh, just somebody dropped the ball, you know, uh, but I, I think it was an isolated incident because we normally have a great relationship with, you know, mm -hmm. the school board and the, and the superintendent, and uh, she always makes us aware of any anything that that we need to to take care of beforehand. Mm -hmm. so. uh, you know, there was uh, Crossgates is a big piece of the town, it and is. I I remember being at University of Albany when that was Pine Bush area. Yep. What's uh, the um, you know what, what, what's the impact that uh, Crossgates has had over the past thirty years that you could see, being that for most of that time you were an officer, uh, you know, is it good, bad? Are you happy it's there? Are you not happy? Are you do you have buyer's remorse? You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think Crossgates all in all has been been good for the town. Um, it, it brings a lot of revenue in uh, between tax dollars and sales tax revenue. Um, the, there is some burden um, which they they compensate for. Uh, they pay for you know a police officer um, mm -hmm. as part of their uh, special use permit. Um, so it does bring in a lot of crime. I mean, you, you bring a shopping mall that big, you're going to have mm -hmm. the crimes that go with having a shopping mall there. Um, and then they have their own mall cops, right? It's well, not they have just, security there. That's right. security, yeah. <laughs> but I call them mall cops, yeah. But they can't arrest anybody, can they? No, I mean, no. They but, they no carry, but they carry some something. Uh, they have handcuffs and they have... Uh, but any they don't have tasers? No. No, okay, just handcuffs no, and a baton handcuffs. like in England? <laughs> no, they're not supposed to, but... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, and they're just there as an agent of the yeah. mall to, to keep peace in the mall until, you know, if it's a situation that needs the police, they call the police and we come. Mm -hmm. um, and then they pay for uh, additional police officers like on weekends and things. And we've had our ups and downs in the mall, you know, but, but all in all, I think it's a, it's a good piece for the town. It draws people in and draws people to Gillen. And, um, are, are you a, nat a, a nature lover? I mean, because it took a lot of the pine bush away also. And, that's, and, and I know the Carna Blue Butterfly wasn't totally extinct by having the mall there, but it was endangered. And, uh, yeah. You know. um, I'm not sure. I, I think there's a lot of pine bush left yeah I mean, there is you know hundreds of acres that, mm -hmm. that they have so i don't think it did any detriment to to the pine bush you know and they've restored a lot of areas you know especially uh, taking over the old sefcu bank right um to restore some of the nature trails and it's, they've made a really nice the discovery center right yes we had the head of the discovery yeah. center on so yeah. as one of our guests so that's right. good it was very interesting, Brian. For thank you, we're out of time. We're, no, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, listen, we're looking for better, bigger things from you. I mean, maybe okay. you aspire to uh, even more things, but we'll have you back and the, terrific. Tell us what's happening in Gilderland, and we only give you always a good blessing that you're going from one thing to another. Should keep on growing and with everything with good health. Absolutely. Thanks. For thank coming. you very much.